Another thing I'm going to very quickly touch on here is surround sound. Now I've got this clip and the camera I use to film it actually films in surround sound. So I'm going to take that clip and throw it onto the timeline. Oh, gone onto the timeline and you notice I've actually got three audio tracks. Open them up, you can see there are three pairs of audio tracks. These are basically the front left and right, the centre and the subwoofer and the back left and right. Now, EDIUS won't mix surround sound. I can't take this stuff and throw it onto the timeline and then mix it all together. But what it will do is it'll let you use it. And if you set EDIUS up properly, it'll actually let you put it onto a DVD or into a file. Now, I haven't got it set up properly here, so I'm going to get rid of that clip and I'm going to make a few changes to my timeline. First of all, I'm going to dump the video and audio track because I find it a lot easier to spread things out onto single tracks when I'm talking about this kind of stuff. And secondly, when I'm putting this on the timeline, I don't want them to go in as pairs, I want them to go in as separate channels, so I end up with six separate audio tracks. And the easiest way to do that is click this little button. Now, if you've got one of our systems, you'll have this little button. You click on that, now it's going to go in as six separate audio tracks. Click on it again, it goes in as pairs of audio tracks. Now, if you haven't got one of our systems, then you won't have this little button, which you could obviously add it, but you get to it by going down to where it's got the audio channels here, right-clicking and saying audio source channel, click, now they're all going in as mono. I Personally, I love that button. I put that button there all the time. But I want to do this because I want to put them in as six separate tracks to make it easier for me to work out what's what. I'm then going to grab my clip and throw it onto the timeline. Now, for a start, you'll notice I only had four audio tracks to start off with. It needed six, so it bung some more in. And now you can see I've got the left and right. So that's the left front and the right front. I've got the center and the subwoofer. And I've got the left back and the right back. Which is not a football match, it's a surround sound clip. Now what I want to do is I want to actually put that onto a DVD. Now, how do I arrange to do that? It's done through a thing called the channel map. Now, if I go to right click on this thing and go to sequence settings, channel map, this is the gizmo that decides how I go out as a surround sound clip. At the moment, I've only got two channels I can go out to. So I'm only ever gonna create stereo, so that's no good. So the first thing I need to do is I've got to change my project so it's got six audio channels. Now, the six audio channels aren't the number of timeline tracks, it's how many audio channels will be in your final file, and you need six for surround sound. All the speakers plus the subwoofer, that's six tracks. So go up to the settings, project, change current setting, open up the advanced section and pop down here to where it says audio channels and choose six. I've now got six audio channels. Well, hey, now I want to get to that channel map again, so I'm going to go sequence settings, channel map, and I've got to set it up like this. At the moment, they're only going to come out on channels one and two. So if I made this into a file, everything will be at the front. I need to click on these things. So just come up to where it says stereo, click on it, and it'll change. And I need to click on it so it looks like this. Now, that's your front left, front right, center, subwoofer, back left, back right. I might even save these as some settings. So click on this little button here, say save. And now, I'm going to call it 5.1. Now, whenever I want to do some surround sound, I can just load up the 5.1 surround sound preset, and bang, I've got my surround sound output. Now, when I want to export this to file, you go File, Export, Burn to Disk. You'll notice if I go to the settings of the surround sound here, oh, look, 5.1. It's automatically doing 5.1 surround sound output for me. Don't have to do anything, wallop, I've got 5.1. I could take it off automatic and up the bit rate if I wanted to do a bit higher, but basically it's going to knock me up a 5.1 track, put it onto the Blu-ray disc or DVD. Cool. So I can't mix it. I'd have to go into another program and mix it. You could maybe buy Adobe Audition, which is a great sound editing program, do a 5.1 mix inside of that, export a six-channel WAV file from it, bring it into here, and then whack it on your DVD. You can't mix it in EDIUS, but you can stick it on a disc. You can also export it to a file. So I'm going to bring up the export to file dialog box, and I've got a lot of stuff here, but one of them is audio. Here I've got a 5.1 preset there. 
obviously you'd expect that you click on that, then you go to export, then you'd be able to export a Dolby Digital 5.1 file and, oh crap, I've only got two channels. Why have I only got two channels? Actually, it's very simple. Go back into the print to file dialog box, choose the audio preset again, and there's a little tick box here that says export in 16-bit two channels. If that's ticked, it's only ever going to export two channels when you make a file. Untick it, then go export, then you can output 5.1. So you can output a 5.1 mix off the Edius timeline. Obviously, that's a very quick run through on how to do surround sound inside of Edius. A lot more of that on our tutorial disc. On the first disc, it's in the editing sound section. Oh, and you might like to know there's also a little button that I use. I use this quite a lot, actually. That button there, the channel map button. I was telling to get to channel map by going sequence settings, channel map. Put that button on the timeline. You can click on that and instantly get to your channel map. There's a really cool new filter inside of Edius called the mask filter. Now I'm going to put the mask filter onto this clip, open it up. So what I want to do is cut this hut out and I'm going to use the mask tool to do it. How do I do that? Right. Well, I'm in the mask tool and I'm going to come up here to all these lists of stuff at the top and I'm going to click on this thing, draw path. And I'm just going to click in the corner and draw a very quick path around the hut. Can be as accurate or not accurate as you prefer. But yay, I've now cut out the hut. Can't see any difference at the moment, it's still just a hut. What I'm going to do is actually come out to the outside and then just take down the opacity of the outside. And as I do that, yay, you can see there, I've now cut the hut out. The hut has landed on a different part of the beach. I can do all sorts of stuff with this. I'm going to zoom in a bit because I can see that my edge there is a bit rubbish, frankly. Just about here. I'm going to go up here and choose the Edit Shape tool and just refine the edge a bit. I can even animate this shape so that it changes over time. It's a full-blown rotoscoping tool. You can use it to apply filters, so for example if I want to brighten up somebody's face but not the rest of the shot, I might put a mask around their face. All sorts of really cunning stuff that you can do with the mask tool. Now, wouldn't it be nice if I could get that hut to come and fly and land on the beach there? That's quite easy to do. I'm going to use the layouter. So let's double click on the layouter and open it up. And here, what I want to do is take the thing off screen. And it's going to start off screen. And now I want to keyframe it. So I'm just going to turn on keyframing for everything. Stick a keyframe at the start. Let's make it a bit smaller as well. Move it along a bit. And then keyframe it moving in. And yep, that's it. It lands on the beach. Let's have a look at that. Done a brilliant effect there of a beach hut flying in. So let's have a quick look at it. Oh. Okay, that's not quite doing what I wanted, isn't it? I wanted the hut to fly in, but you can see what's happening is I've basically created a hole and the hut is flying behind the hole. I didn't want to do that. I wanted the hut to actually fly on its own. So how do I get it to do that? Again, you'd know this if you'd watched the second disc on our tutorial, but I was amazed when I did a, a training session the other day and a lot of people just didn't realise it. This is why it's one of my secrets of Edius. The point is... These things are in the wrong order. I need the mask first, because it's doing the movement and then it's applying the mask. I want the mask first. How do you reorder them? Very simple. Pick it up, put it at the back. Now I've got the mask first, then the layouter. Now let's have a butcher's of what it does. Yay, in flies the hut. And it's one of the nice things about the layouter, which is a new way of doing picture-in-picture -picture effects inside of Edius, is that it could be reorganized, it could be moved around. You know, with the old picture-in-picture -picture effects, they were always stuck. The layouter, you can change the stacking order, you can change where it is in the list, and where it is does have an effect. For my last idea secret, I want to talk a little bit about capturing. Good old-fashioned capturing off tape, which you may or may not use, or new capturing through a Storm Mobile or anything like that. Okay, how do you capture stuff? 
Well, I'm going to come up to capture and I'm going to choose capturing off DV and it puts me into capture mode, prompts me for a tape name and yeah, okay, I'm now ready to capture. That's cool. But one thing people have complained about is that if you're capturing off of DV or HDV and you have an HD Spark or a Storm Mobile inside the computer, when you're capturing off DV, what's playing here doesn't pop out of the Spark. Well, I'm not going to tell you a magical way of making it work because there isn't one. It doesn't. That's just what happens these days. But there is a way where you could watch it in a nice big screen as you capture. These days, Edius has got a nice feature that when you're editing, you can just double click on the player window and it pops it up full screen. Now, I can't show this off very well in this tutorial because I can't show you two screens. But if I did have two screens running, I could have one of them showing this full screen and I could have the other one showing me the Edius interface. Now, I've done this when I'm capturing and I've not had any problems. It's vaguely possible your system might not be able to keep up with it, but it certainly worked every time for me. What I do is I have my two screens going, double click on it, and that will put my image here full screen on my second monitor. Then I go into capture, and whatever pops up here actually pops up full screen on the other monitor. So it means you can watch it on a nice big screen as you're capturing. It's not something that's in the manual, something I just found out by fiddling. And it could be that maybe your system can't keep up with it. Every time I've tried it, it's worked fine. Second little capturing thing, which was really, really nice, I was finding when I was trying to do some analog capture. I wanted to capture an hour's worth of stuff. I didn't want to have to sit here and watch it because it's really tedious. I wanted to set it going, come back later on. The trouble is, I would just click on the capture button and it would start capturing and it would never stop. My original analog tape would run out and it would still be merrily capturing lots of black stuff. Wouldn't it be nice to do a capture where I say, capture an hour? Now, if you're on DV tape, you can set an in point and an out point. But if you're doing an analog capture through your Storm Mobile, you can't. Can you? Oh, yes, you can. Actually, it's very simple. I'm in the capture window. Come to duration here. And then just click on duration and type in one. Oh, 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 oh. That is an hour. I've now put in a capture duration of an hour. Then I click on the capture button. And lo and behold, it starts capturing, but it's only capturing an hour's worth of stuff. It says here you're doing an hour, and it tells you how much time you've got left. Well, those were my 10 secrets of Edius, as shown off at the Pro Video Show. I hope you found them useful. Explained a lot more in depth in our tutorials, how to keep saying this, which you can get from our website. We're also doing a special offer where if you buy Edius or any variation of Edius hardware, you'll get another 20 quid off the price of the tutorials. And of course, if you buy an Edius system from us, then you'll get them free anyway. If you want to learn more about Edius, then please pop onto our website where you can read a lot more about Edius and see some more tutorial videos as well. Thank you very much.